Hey, Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Welcome to the lecture 10 for KKKT4293 Introduction to MEMS Technology. So this is the recorded lecture. For us to cover lecture topic 6.1, Bulk Micro Machining and Etching. This is a continuation for this topic. We have covered the basics. Starting from the outline, we know that it is uh, about looking at bulk micro machining. Okay, we, we have first previously looked at this crystal crystallography and then we look at the different types of etching, isotropic and anisotropic etching. And then we look specifically at how do we etch a silicon substrate and the etching process itself doing wet and dry etching. And then how do we etch complex 3D structure? So in this topic, we focus more on the wet etching, anisotropic wet etching for silicon substrate. Okay. And I will not go through all this. We have covered all this. Okay. Uh, the only thing that I want to focus more on is that here we are doing a top-down etching analysis. Okay. Whereby we do our micro machining based on top-down bulk micro machining, which is essentially etching the material. So we, from the bulk material from our silicon, we etch away all the different parts so that we get our uh, desired uh, mem structure. Okay, here we look at uh, specifically at silicon etching. All right, wet etching. All right, so we are looking wet at wet etching. So wet etching, uh, etching can be wet or dry etching. So wet etching involves liquid phase chemical reaction whereby uh, dry etching on the harder end is looking at plasma and gas phase chemical reaction. Okay, so when we do our etching, the, the result of etching can be what we call the etching profile. Etching profiles refers to the shape of the etched region. So when we etch away parts of our bulk material, we can have a certain shape or region where we call it a profile. So etching profile is how it looks like from a certain angle. Okay, and our etching profile can either be isotropic or anisotropic, whereby isotropic means the etching is carried out equally in all directions so it's equal etching all direction or anisotropic whereby it is directional so we can control the direction of of the etching to happen only in one direction okay to have our own orientation for the edge and get our uh, our shape to be directional okay now we already covered Miller indices and crystallography. I just want to stress here again that the important thing you need, you need to understand, we are dealing with the three main, uh, three main planes family. Okay, those families are 100, 110, and 111. Okay, so 100, 110, 110, and 111. The one thing that I want to stress here is that is that we are focusing more on the family. What do I mean by family? So if you look at this right hand side, this is the 111 family. Okay, so it just depends on which way you take the plane, but the plane itself is 111. So it can be this way. So if it's this way, it becomes uh it becomes uh 11 one, negative 1 or it can be what this in this case it is let me think it is one 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 all negative and if this if this is the case it is one one negative one so whatever it is it is still the same family which is one 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 similarly if you look at the one zero zero we are looking at the family so if you look at the green plane here the green plane here is our one zero zero that means on the other side, this side, okay, the opposite side behind it is 1, 0, 0, negative here, 1 bar, 0, 0. So the bar can be down or up, it depends on the convention that you're using. But here in this in this particular note, we are looking at bar. So 1 bar is basically just the, the opposite side, so 1, 0, 0. Similarly, it can be this plane here. So this plane here on this side is actually 0, 1, 0. Okay, and then on this side, it, is, it can be 0, 1, bar 0. And then you can have the similarly on the bottom and on the top as well. So here, 
1001 bar 0 and 100 are all the same thing. It's the same family. It's the family whereby you have 1, 1 and 2 zeros. Similarly here, in the middle, 110 is, the, we are looking at the family, so it can be either 110, 1 bar 10, 1 1 bar 0, or 0 1 1. Okay, those are still one family. And this concept is very important for you to understand because when we're doing etching, we are doing in three dimension. So we are looking at all the plane as a family. So the 1 1 1 family plane can be referred to from any direction. All right, this will become more obvious once we do the analysis for, for any sort of topic we're etching. Okay, so here it's just uh, trying to stress on our, our Miller indices just now. So imagine you have your wafer here. All right, so let's say this is a 100 type wafer. So it's a 100 type wafer whereby the, the surface, right, the surface is facing 100. Therefore, if the surface is 100, Underneath it is one bar zero zero, right? Like from the, the surface at the bottom is one bar zero zero. And then if you cut it uh, into half, so if you look at this this plane here, if you cut it into half exactly at this plane, then that plane is also one zero zero. But it may be it is not actually one zero zero, but it can be like zero one zero. But this is still the one zero zero family. And then you can have the 90 degrees of that, which is this plane. Okay, and if you cut a certain angle here, so if you cut here and that that cutting is uh, perpend uh, is per parallel to the one one zero plane, so here this this plane is one zero zero, and then ninety degrees of that, which is this one, is also the one one zero plane. So in the same wafer, you can expose different planes, as long as you know where the, that plane is. And if you from the same wafer, if you want to expose the one 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 plane, then that means you have to cut it in a diagonal, is in in a diagonal way, all right? Which we cannot uh, see here. Okay, so from the uh, from the same wafer, you can expose the one zero zero and one one zero plane, if you know where to find it. All right, so that is important for you to know. So again, isotropic and anisotropic etching, we know what's the difference between that. Okay, and then um, our etching can be reaction limited. Okay, whereby uh, the etch rate depends on how, how fast the chemical reaction is taking place. And we know that chemical reaction can be increased by increasing the temperature. So if the chemical reaction is increased, therefore the etch rate is also increased. Because etching by liquid is basically just having a chemical reaction. Not just uh, wet etching, uh, dry etching also can be based on chemical reaction, but not necessarily. So dry etching can be either chemical reaction or physical uh, etching. But for wet etching, it's always, always chemical reaction. So the etch rate is dependent on temperature because it is re reaction limited. And then it can also be diffusion limited, whereby etch rate can be dependent on mixing. Once you do the etching, so for example, if you have chemical reaction in wet etching, uh, you have chemical reaction, right? So a, a, a chemical reaction will result in byproduct. So what is the product of the reaction? So the product of the reaction will dissolve into your etchant, into your liquid and mix around. And therefore, it will reduce the amount of your active etching molecule. So as time goes by, the etch rate will drop because there's less and less active etching molecule because it has been mixed with the byproduct of the etch, uh, etch chemical reaction. And it can also be dependent on layout and geometry loading. Again, uh, but let's recall back layout and geometry loading refers to the opening. So either it can be have if your if your mask is big, then the chemical reaction or the etch rate will be will be faster than if you have a small opening. So if you look at this example here, right? This is in this uh, particular example here. If you put it in the same etchant, you would expect that the etch uh, etch rate will be the same, but it's not because it depends on on how how large of the ex uh, the the area is exposed. So here you're exposing more area compared to this this part here. So the etch rate on a smaller opening is slower than the overall etch rate of the larger opening. Okay. 
and then so if you look at this figure here this this uh, matrix table here so we can have wet etching and plasma dry, uh, dry etching so wet etching can produce normally it produces isotropic that means the etch rate is equal in all directions so if you cut it into half the side profile the cross-sectional view you, you can see that undercutting is happening and then the edge is happening equally in all direction okay but it can also be any isotropic for wet etching how do we do it by by etching it according to a certain uh crystal plane and that is uh, achievable if we use a standard wafer so if you you as if you are using a standard wafer of 100 Okay, you will get anisotropic etching if you use wet etching. If you use glass, if you try to etch glass, all right, glass have is is amorphous. There's no crystal plane, therefore it will always be isotropic. Or if your crystal plane is random, then it will be isotropic. But if it's a standard wafer one zero zero, then your wet etching the the etch profile will be anisotropic because it will follow the plane. The exposed plane of the standard standard wafer plasma dry etching it can be either isotropic or anisotropic if it's a purely chemical process if it's a vapor phase chemical process then it will be isotropic similar to wet etching but if it is based on ion and plasma ion plus physical etching then it will be directional you can control the direction and in in, in this case it's it's downwards okay so if you are doing wet etching, of course we are using our etchant. So our etchant is normally acids. Okay, we can have H and A is a mixture of hydrofluoric acid, nitric acid, and acetic acid. Or it can be any other a combination of more than uh, three acids or less. For silicon dioxide in particular, you use purely hydrofluoric acid. Now let's look at anisotropic wet etching closely. So now we are focusing on wet etching, particularly anisotropic etching by etching a standard wafer. So let's put here standard wafer. And normally our standard is a 100 wafer. Okay, 100 wafer. So if you have a 100 wafer, okay here let's look at this picture here when you etch away so when you open up a window like this on top of your wafer and you etch away and then once you finish etching you can look at the edge profile so this is the side view edge profile if you cut it into half the cross-sectional view you can see a v okay that means here um the side the the edge profile evolve until you get an inverted pyramid like this okay so it is therefore we call it anisotropic because it follows the shape of the crystal plane which plane this plane here so the the, the surface here is 100 because it's a 100 wafer so when we do the the etching the exposed plane here the v-shape here facing out perpendicular to this plane is the 111 plane we will see why the 111 plane is exposed and the the uh, etching profile follows the 111 plane now looking on the right hand side here okay so let's say we have silicon nitride on the surface and then we open the silicon nitride to open up a window that looks like this so this is our etching window so when when we open this uh, etching window we we immerse into our etching what will happen this exposed region will be etched away so as the etching process occur, it will evolve and then it goes deeper and deeper. Okay. And then we, because of a certain criteria at the corner here, right? The, um, okay. But before that, as you can see here, okay. So it will etch away according to the shape of our opening, but then the, the side profile here, all right, will be following the 111 plane. Right, and then it goes deeper and deeper okay because of the unique uh, properties of your crystal plane at uh, such corner okay etching will take place here and then it will etch underneath the the protrusion here so it will etch away underneath here producing an undercutting so here we know that this corner here is what we call 
convex corner. Okay, we will look this. We will look into this in detail after this. So just bear bear with me. Okay, but but what I want to show here is that you can do the etching, and then certain angle of the etching will produce an undercutting. So it is an anisotropic undercutting. It will undercut, and then you will leave with a, a suspended region here, suspended cantilever here. Okay, this is done uh, purposely to pr to produce the cantilever. Okay, so for wet etching, wet etching setup, the etch rate can be controlled or dependent on these things here. So the first one is loss of reactive species through consumption. Uh, like I said, when you have the active mo molecule, if you have, if you are using an etching which is acid, so the the acid molecule is your active molecule that is doing the etching. And the etching is basically chemical reaction. When the chemical reaction takes place, you have byproduct. So basically the active material or active molecules is consumed in the chemical reaction to do the etching. So as time goes by, as you carry on doing the etching, less and less active molecules are available. Therefore, the etch rate also will, will drop. Okay, this is what we mean by loss of reactive species through consumption, which is basically chemical reaction. And then evaporation of liquids. Of course, uh, sometimes if you want to increase the chemical reaction, you want to increase the etching process, you increase the temperature a little bit. But uh, one drawback of that is that the aqueous solution of your etching can evaporate. So the water can evaporate away, making it more thick. Or more concentrated so the more concentrated your liquid is the edge rate can actually increase okay and then poor mixing is basically edge product blocks diffusion of reactants so we know that chemical reaction will produce byproduct and this byproduct can actually uh, be deposited on the surface of your newly etched surface so once you once you do the etching it will chemical reaction and it will it will be taken out but then it will it can sometimes still stick to the surface. When you have things sticking on the surface, you cannot easily etch away the surface underneath it. So the chemical reaction will drop and so does the etch rate. Okay, poor mixing. All right, this is what we call by poor mixing because some of the byproduct is, is sticking to the surface. So you cannot etch away the subsequent layer or the layer underneath it. And then due to contamination, sometimes you can have contamination applied potential so if you apply a potential bit, uh, between your sample and the ad etching across the the apparatus you can control the edge rate as well and then illumination especially uv light so uv light can also uh, influence chemical reaction either increase or decrease depending on the type of chemical reaction so edge rate variation due to material being etched so due to the material if you have impurities or dopants so what are the material being etched? Of course, our wafer. So our wafer is what we are etching. So if it's a type of wafer, we need to know what is the dopant and what is the doping concentration because it can affect the etch rate as well. Okay, and then etch rate, as we know, can also be dependent on the layout or loading. Basically, how large the opening of the window is or how complex the shape is. For example, if you have um, a shape like this, which is a rectangle or a square, Okay, the edge rate might, might be faster than if you have a window which is like a narrow rectangle like this. So although the total surface area is the same, let's say this surface area and this surface area is the same, but the geometry is different, the loading is different. So this one must be slower or can be slower than this one. Okay, so it depends on the loading or the layout structure geometry. Okay, this can affect the edge rate as well. Okay, so as far as silicon is concerned, what we use is KOH or potassium hydroxide KOH. So the chemical reaction is this one. So first, uh, silicon is reacting with the OH, producing silicon hydroxide, okay, with four molecules. And then water will absorb these four electrons, producing hydrogen. So you will left out with silicon hydroxide and or hydrogen. So you have bubbling occurring during the etching process okay now the most single most important thing that you need to understand and know is that the crystal plane 
have varying edge rate and the, the ratio between this different family plane is according to this here so the edge rate for 110 family to the one one to, to the 100 and 111 is 600 to 400 to 1 what does this mean it means that etching 110 plane is faster than etching 100 by a factor of 6 over 4 or 3 over 2 okay so etching 110 is 3 over 2 faster than etching 100 on the other hand, 111 plane is the, is the slowest, almost zero. The edge rate is almost zero if you were to compare to the edge rate of 110 and 100. So here that means that uh, etching 110 is faster than etching 111 plane by 600 times. And etching 100, etching 100 is 400 times faster than etching 111. So basically, these are all the, the ratio of edge rate, 600 to 400 to 1. So why is this, this, why is this, the, why is this the case? Okay, why does one, one, one family plane have, is very difficult to edge or has a very slow edge rate? It is because one, one, one plane has three of its bonds below the surface. Remember when you are doing chemical reaction, you are breaking bond and you are forming new bond. So you're breaking bond, uh, you're breaking the bond of your of your uh, of the active active material, and then chemical reaction is happening. You break the bond, absorb energy, and then you form a new bond to form the byproduct and you release energy. Okay, so since one 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 plane, three so one single unit cell has or one single atom is connected silicon atom is connected to four neighboring silicon atoms right so one silicon atom is covalently bonded with four silicon atoms in order for you to uh, react with this single silicon you need to break all the four covalent bonds and since three of in one 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 family plane three of these bonds is below the surface therefore um, the etchant, the active etching molecule cannot react with the bonds which is underneath the surface. It's, it's hard for it to penetrate to or to, to, to have the chemical reaction to occur. So it is slower because three of the bonds is underneath. So it cannot, the, the chemical reaction is very difficult to take place. It can happen, but it takes time or maybe you, you, you need to, uh, it needs to happen at a certain angle and so on. Right, that's one. Secondly, uh, the second reason why 111 family plane has a very slow edge rate is because it may form protective oxide very quickly. So silicon oxide might be formed quickly on 111 plane. So when you have an oxide layer on 111 plane happening after the first layer has been etched away, what will happen is that the oxide layer will prevent any further chemical reaction to occur. Hence, you are preventing any further etching to occur. So you cannot etch the subsequent layer or the layers underneath it. It can still happen, but it, it, it will happen very slowly according to this ratio of etch rate. And another reason, the third one is 111 is smoother than other crystal planes. So when it's smoother, you can only act at it at from one angle, and from one angle, it's very difficult. Okay, it's very difficult to attack it from a different angle because only this the it is smooth because only one angle is exposed. Okay, so when you have a one one if when you have a one zero zero wafer, okay, so the surface perpendicular to the wafer is the one zero zero direction. Therefore, if you open up a rectangle okay the etching will will occur here and then it will follow it will go down okay and then it will expose and it will follow the anisotropic etching will follow the plane of 111 plane so here this and this plane here is actually the 111 plane and will follow the 1111 plane and the etching as it goes deeper it will basically become narrower and narrower until it becomes a blind cavity so this is what we call a blind cavity a blind cavity is, looks like this Okay, so if we etch from the top and from the bottom like this, 
okay the blind cavity from both direction can meet up in the middle here pro, uh, producing a hole a true wafer hole so here is a typical uh, situation whereby we have we are mixing one part potassium hydroxide and two parts water uh, weight to volume ratio wt is work to volume ratio uh, stirred bath so that means remember stirred bath that means we have our beaker here okay let's say uh, we have our beaker and this is your wafer your wafer is suspended um, by wafer holder it is suspended and then it is heated on a hot plate so this hot plate can also have magnetic so this magnetic field rotation will uh, if you put a magnet so if you put a magnet a piece of magnet here because of the magnetic field that is generated by the hot plate it will basically follow that and it will it will turn inside the water it will turn and therefore it will create a vortex and basically a stirring effect so you are using a stirring effect hot plate is you are heating it at 80 degrees celsius for you to etch away silicon you can use a this the different etch mask which is silicon nitride silicon oxide or photoresist if you use silicon nitride it is um okay so here here's silicon etch rate standard one here it for one zero zero uh weight wafer it is 1.4 micrometer per minute okay and then if your etch mask is silicon nitride here it shows that silicon nitride is virtually impenetrable or cannot be etched away by using potassium hydroxide therefore the etch rate is zero so it means that it is a very good mask you can also use silicon oxide but silicon oxide can still be etched away by potassium hydroxide but the rate is much lower compared to the rate of the etching of the silicon material and you can also use photoresist however uh, your photoresist can may have a very fast etching rate as well so it depends on what you need if you just need to etch very fast then it's okay it's if you need to do the etching for a long time to etch away a very uh, significant depth of silicon then photoresist might not be the best so you can use either silicon oxide or silicon nitride so micro masking by hydrogen bubbles lead to roughness because we know that the byproduct is hydrogen so hydrogen can stick hydrogen bubble can stick on the surface and therefore as the etching is carried out you can create roughness which is basically uh, according to the shape of the bubble okay now i think we stopped at this this part last time right so i'm going to continue here talking about the 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 evolution of anisotropic wet etching so this is the analysis that we need to look into in order to know what is the etch profile and for us to know how long does the etching must be carried out and to anticipate what is the result from the etching process we need to know or we need to predict to be able to predict how does the product of the etching will turn out to be okay now let's look at this this picture here on the let's look on the right hand side first this 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 uh this part right so you you go through the process here so here is looking at the the top so if you look from the top of your wafer let's say you have an opening which is more or less a square okay so if this wafer is a one zero zero wafer that means uh, looking from the top uh, this plane that is looking right back at us is the one zero zero plane and then since you know that is the one zero zero plane that means at the opening so if you have your opening and uh, you can have your opening to align with the 110 plane direction so where is the 110 plane direction on a 100 wafer so the 110 plane direction is basically parallel to the surface so parallel to the surface is the 110 direction and then 90 degrees to that is also the family the another family of 110 zero and you can align the opening mask with this with this uh 110 plane so if you align it with uh, if you align the side of your opening window with the 10 with with the 110 plane okay what you will have is that the once you do the etching so once you do the etching 
the edge pro uh, the edge profile will follow the size of your window here it will etch away one layer at a time so it will uh, etch away the first layer of the exposed region and then it will it will it will expose the first layer of 111 plane and then it goes on to the second layer and so on since the 111 plane is very slow by 600 times compared to the 110 plane that means then you will you will have exposed 111 plane as the as the etching is carried out so it can be carried out and it can evolve so you you can see the evolution from here to here and then looking at this let's zoom in here so looking at this the depth will increase right so the depth will increase so the depth will increase and and the depth of the 111 plane also will increase a little bit but most of it will be exposed here so this is the 111 plane here and here this is the effective depth of your of your edge process and then here you have slight undercutting here so if you look at this region here you have slight undercutting okay because some of the 111 plane still can be etched away but 600 or 400 times slower so uh, as the etching is being carried out this is what we call the concept of transitional profile so all these are all the transitional process is the evolution of your edge profile as the etching process is still being carried out so it's the transition from one from from uh from one time to an another time so as the time progresses it's it trans transition okay so transitional profile is the is the the edge profile which okay transitional profile is is the pro is the edge profile while the etching process is still being carried out it's still not stopped yet it's still being carried out so if you take a snapshot during the etching profile or during the etching process you will you you can see the transitional profile so you can see the transitional process profile at t time 10 minutes and then you can see the time at 20 minutes 30 minutes and so on in this particular example is what we call the stable type transitional profile so transitional profile can be unstable or stable which we will see later on okay so another concept that you need to look at or understand is self-limiting stable profile slsp so what is slsp okay self-limiting stable profile is uh, the edge profile at which it will stop when you reach certain stage during the uh, etching process and this um, stage is determined by the the material itself okay what do i mean by that so let's look at an, another example here right so let's look at this this particular geometry here so looking at the same wafer 100 wafer looking from the top let's say this is our opening window our opening window is a square and then it is aligned the side is aligned with the 110 110 plane as i mentioned just now if that is the case then the edge profile or the footprint of the edge will follow the shape of the of the opening window so this region will be etched away okay because 111 plane is very hard to etch therefore you will expose the 111 plane bit by bit starting from from this okay from this and then you you evolve evolve until you reach the end so when does the end occur the end occur when the the 111 plane here and 111 plane here is meeting at this particular end point here so once you uh, these two planes have reached the end point here you will have an inverted pyramid structure that looks like this so if you look at the three dimensional view you have an inverted pyramid structure this is what we call a blind cavity it is a cavity a cavity is like a hole and then it's a blind cavity that means it is it is blinded at one point here so it is blinded at one point here if you look from the top if you look from the side it, it is like a v shape here so once it has reached this blind spot that means we know that this etching profile has reached what we call self-limiting stable profile 
why it is self-limiting because the etching rate uh, the, the etch rate is limited by the by the structure itself or by the substrate itself it is self-limiting so even if you put it inside etching for longer time no etching will take place or the the further etching will take place really really slowly the the edge profile will not change so the shape from like for example let's say you have reached at time one hour you get this line cavity right and let's say you increase the etching time to two hours you will see that the the edge profile is still the shape the same like this but maybe it gets gets a slightly more deeper like this okay slight, slightly deeper like this where you have slight undercutting here and here okay so once you have reached this v shape the blind cavity that means the the etching has reached its self-limiting stable profile so the profile is stable it will not change the profile shape okay and it is self-limiting that means you can change the etching or whatever increase the temperature but the limitation of the etching is limited by the shape of or by by the by the substrate itself by silicon substrate because the 111 plane is already all the region exposed here is only the 111 plane so if you look from this direction here okay so this plane are all 111 111 111 so all these are 111 plane so only 111 plane are exposed so all these are all 111 plane so we know that 111 plane is very hard to etch almost zero rate so it becomes self-limiting stable profile it is limited by the by the structure itself by the substrate itself so recalling back about etching profile so the transitional profile is the profile at which when the etching is still taking place you can see the evolution of the etch profile if you take a snapshot you can know what is the transitional profile the transitional profile can be unstable utp or stable stp utp is basically due to fast etching and high index plane if you have an a high index plane a fast etching and very weird looking um weird looking opening okay you the, the the transitional profile is hard to predict so it is unstable you you can never know at any particular snapshot what is the shape of the profile you can never know what you can know is is at, at the end what is the result on the other hand stp stable transitional profile is normally slow and predictable at rate so it depends if you have uh, the alignment of the marks is correct and then the shape of the opening is very simple just just a square or a rectangle you can have an stp all right and what is the what is the uh the condition for self-limited stable profile is the etching is limited by the substrate itself so you can do the etching process until it has reached the slsp and you need to know whether etching a particular substrate will result in slsp or not so how do we know we need to know a few things so the first thing is that are we using a standard wafer so if you use a 100 wafer okay and then if your opening window up uh, on top is of a reasonable size and loading then yes you will almost definitely get what we call self-limited stable profile okay so a self-limited stable profile is is achieved when you have a uh, very long okay so if your t capital t is the edge time so if your edge time is very very long and then it will stop the etching process will stop once you reach the slsp okay so what we want is the self-limited stable profile because if we just want to basically stop our etching process based on stp or utp right? for example we want a particular shape so we need to to estimate like how long it will take before we must stop so that we get our our desired profile is very difficult to control because of the many variables that we need to control 
but if we rely on the result of our etching profile to be a self-limited stable profile then we are safe because as long as the etch time is long enough then we know that we will get our desired SLSP so it's always good to do your etching and aim to get SLSP because then you don't have to control T you just make sure that your T is long enough Alright, so here that's why it says the SLSP profile are of interest, most insensitive to overtime etching. Okay, so etch rate in a particular direction, for example, the 100 direction is denoted by the symbol small r with the subscript of the, the crystal plane. And then wafer thickness is small t, and w is the, the side of the shortest the the length of the window okay the length the length of the so if your window is a square then the sides are all of equal length okay but if it's a rectangle okay if it's a rectangle then you need to know that w is the shortest one so w is the the shortest one so normally we are concerned with the shortest side it doesn't really matter if it's long or whatever it is determined by the shortest shortest side so h rate is r h time is capital t small t is the thickness of the substrate so typical h outcome once you have reached our slsp so so for typical slsp you can only have two results so self limitance stable profile can be either a true wafer hole or a blind cavity you know what the blind cavity uh, is so blind cavity is like this when you have uh it stops at a point so in this particular case if you have a square opening then the blind cavity is point if you have a rectangle opening window so it will still become an inverted pyramid kind of structure but the blind cavity is is a line so it is a line here like uh, rather than a point so if you have if you have a square and then as the as the edge is happening you can see that the stp the stable transitional profile will result in an inverted pyramid but the bottom is 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 flat right it's not it hasn't reached the blind point yet so here we can say that it is still and if we stop the the etching process it is this this is still a blind cavity but it is a plane plain blind cavity so you can you, you can have a blind plain blind cavity you can have a line cavity or you can have a blind blind cavity blind point cavity so blind cavity ends at a point line or a plane now let's look at the the quantitative analysis that we need to do right so how do we know so when we do our our etching we need to anticipate what is the resulting etching profile so this is etching profile estimation procedure that you need to to do some sort of calculation right so first thing you need to know what is your edge time so if your edge time is long enough how do we know it is long enough if it satisfies this equation here if t capital t time is much bigger than small t over r which is the thickness of the wafer over the edge rate of the 100 plane then we can move on so if this is the first evaluation first evaluation so if we evaluate this and the answer is yes this this condition is satisfied then we move to the second evaluation so the second evaluation is to evaluate this equation here so is the w or the side length the side opening of the opening window w if it is bigger than 2t over 10 54.7 tangents 54.7 degree so 2t is the thickness two times the thickness over tangent 54.7 what is 54.7 so 54.7 degrees is basically the angle between 111 plane and 100 plane so this is the angle here so 54 yes this one so angle between the 111 plane and this angle here this angle over this angle plane is 54.75 to be exact okay so we evaluate that 
So if W is bigger than this, 2t over tangent 54.7, then we know that our SLSP is a true, a true wafer hole. What does it mean? If It means that in this situation here, if your opening window, the side window, so re remember when we are looking at the side of the window, if you look at it from the top, if it's a rectangle, W is the shortest one. So if the shortest one is big enough and it is bigger than 2t over tangent 54.7, and then we know it is a true wafer hole. That means as the etching happening down here, it will etch away all this until it reached the bottom and have etched away all the silicon here. That means if you remove your, your mask region here, it is a hole. It's a true wafer hole. You will create a hole. On the other hand, if the situation is like this, where W is less than 2T over tangent 54.7, you will get what we call a blind cavity. So how do we know it's a true wafer hole of blind cavity? Depend on this evaluation here. So evaluate this equation here. It can be a true wafer hole or a, a blind cavity. So on the other hand, uh, questions can be asked in terms of, okay, what is the maximum opening window size for us to make sure that we, we don't get a true wafer hole and always get a blind cavity? Or what is the minimum thickness of our wafer if we want to make sure that we always have a hole for the SLSP and so on. So the questions can be in from a different perspective. Okay. Now what if what if our first condition here is 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 according to this condition here? So if our first evaluation of the time, which is etching time, is less than T over R, so that means our second evaluation will be different. So now we are evaluating this equation here. Looking at W, compare W with 2T, T being the time, times R, the chemical, uh, the edge rate over tangent 54.7. So if we do, if, if this, if the second, if this one is satisfied, that means you will get an STP profile, which is a blind cavity, ending at a, a plane. So this profile can be used to produce a thin silicon membrane with controlled thickness. For example, if we carry on the, the edge, uh, if we carry on the edge, the edge uh, pro process long enough, you know that based on this, you will get a true wafer hole. But how can we control so that we don't get a true wafer hole? It's by controlling the edge time so that we add, we can stop the etching process just before it it. Uh, edge away the completely until the the other side of the wafer so if we stop here and if we can stop at a particular time which is crucial to de determine the thick the, the the thickness of the thickness of our membrane here so we can stop it so that we can have a very thin layer of silicon left and we can use this as a as a silicon membrane for whatever application And if our opening window is small enough, then definitely, if this second condition is, is satisfied, then we will get an SLSP rather than an STP, and it will be a blind cavity ending at a point or a line. And then we can estimate what is the depth, which is the depth. Depth is basically the depth of the blind cavity. We can calculate it using trigonometry or this equation here. So that is all that you need to know when you are doing the calculation and estimation of the, the uh, etching profile based on wet and isotropic etching. So this is an example that you can go through okay, from the lecture note, how to calculate different things. Okay. Now I would like to go straight away to this one, which is the rules of anisotropic etching for complex structure or complex masks. So just now we have looked in a situation whereby the mask is either a square or a rectangle, right? So those are very standard. And uh, the one that we saw just now is when the, the side of the square or rectangle is aligned with the 110 plane. So what if we have, let's say, so this is our 100 wafer, and then this is our mask. Our mask have different opening window structures. So as you can see here, this one, this particular structure is a square, but it's not really a square as 
because now we can see that the side is not aligned to the direction of 110. So here it is instead of a square, we call it a diamond. It's a diamond shape. It's a, it's a diamond shape, right? So it's not exactly a square because the side is not aligned to the 110 direction and then here we can have a rectangle we can have a circle or you can have any arbitrary shape that we want so what are the rules that we need to go through in order to estimate or in order for us to anticipate or predict what is the the uh, etching profile is okay so um just now we have looked at the side profile right so the side profile of the etching profile so we look at the uh, keratan rentas okay the cross-sectional view so another profile that we need to be concerned with is what we call the footprint of etching so, or the name here is let me see let me see yeah so the footprint of self-limited cavity so we need to find out what is the footprint of self-limited cavity if the square or rectangle is aligned with the one one zero plane then we know that the FSLC is either a square or a rectangle with the shape and size similar or the same as the window. But once you, uh, once there's a misalignment between the the side of the window with the one zero zero plane, okay, the FSLC will no longer follow the shape of the window. It will be something else. So if you have a misalignment or if the shape of your window is not exactly square or rectangle, then you will end up with a different FSLC. Footprint of self-limited cavity. What we want to know is what is the shape of the etching profile looking from the top. So FSLC is looking from the top. Uh, SLSP is looking in the side, side profile or the cross-sectional view. Okay, so what are the rules? So we need to follow this rule. So the first rule here is we need to look at for mask window shapes other than rectangle where the diamond, circle, hexagon or whatever. And then situation is when the mask window alignment not parallel to the 110 direction. So the first thing that you need to look at is the type of corners. What do we mean by that? So if this is our mask, Right, so the yellow region are the the covered region. The white region here are this is the covered region. The white region are basically the window opening. So if you put it on top of your silicon, this is the exposed silicon. This is the exposed silicon. So the yellow region are all the covered region or what we, what we call a solid region. Right, so let's call the covered region solid region, and then the opening window is the the opening lah. Okay. Now, how do we determine the type of corner and what kind of type of corner we are looking at? We are talking about the corners here, right? This corner, this one, the circle has no corner. And then looking at all the corners, any corners, right? So all these are all corners. So we need to know whether it is a concave corner or the convex corner. How do we decide that? We look at the solid angle. What do we mean by solid angle? So let's say we are looking at this particular corner here okay we are looking at this particular corner there this corner so solid angle is looking at what is the angle between one solid line here to the next solid line there like this so from here to there it's definitely more than 180 degrees right so here we say that this is a concave corner this also must be a concave corner this also must be a concave corner and then looking at the diamond here so for the diamond here we evaluate from here to here so this is the solid angle solid angle solid angle and solid angle so our solid angles here are all more than 180 degrees so these are all concave 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 and then the circle have no corner now let's look at this one this one is interesting so looking at let's look at this particular corner here so if the solid angle is from here to here right from here there to there so that is more than 180 degrees definitely so this is concave but look at this corner here so for that particular corner this corner so the the solid angle is only from here to here 
and that is basically around 90 degrees so that means 90 degrees is less than 180 degrees so that therefore that is what we call a convex corner okay so let's say if a convex corner is is across concave corner is 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 a uh, it's a thick so this is concave concave convex concave 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 convex convex concave concave this one is concave concave convex convex concave 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 convex convex concave okay so now we know all the corners inside our window we know whether it is concave or or convex okay so for convex corner fastest etching plane dominate the 3d shaping evolving underneath muff region tends to undercut rapidly and exposing fast etching planes that means you can have undercutting and you get what the cantilever structure that we we saw previously just now okay because the uh the angle of the convex corner in such a way that you can attack the one 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 plane from different direction therefore you can etch it away and produce undercutting concave corner on the other hand is slow etching planes such as one 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 tend to develop and prevail and it will remain there this concept of undercutting is used to form cantilevers and freestanding beams okay like so let's let's go back to our example just now so here so here are all your concave corner so concave corner it will one 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 will will prevail so there's no undercutting but here it is convex and convex so here convex and convex undercutting will occur so all the material underneath it will be etched away because the one 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 plane is exposed from more than one direction and at the end it will stop at at this this plane here leaving behind a cantilever as freestanding cantilever there right similar to here you can see this one as exactly what is happening so convex corners bounded by one 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 planes are attacked and therefore undercutting will occur this is some other example as well so the first rule just now rule of anisotropic etching the first rule determine whether it's convex corner concave corner it is if it's a convex corner then undercutting will occur if it's a concave corner one 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 will be exposed and prevail and then the third one the third rule is find footprint of self-limited cavity fslc okay so how do we find flsc we need to follow rule number four and rule number five and rule number six first number four find most right most left most top and most bottom points or lines then draw lines parallel or perpendicular to one one zero plane connecting all the points or lines found in step four and then step number six the fs lc sorry this the fs lc area is the area bounded by the four lines connected in step five okay what do we mean by that so let's look at an example here right so here let's look at our mask just now let's say our mask just now have a diamond a square and arbitrary shape and all the other shapes here so in fact regardless of whatever your shape is slps are almost always inverted pyramid with sides aligned with one zero zero so this is all that you need to remember for one zero zero wafer so for one zero zero wafer whatever your opening window shape is if the etching time is long enough the SLSP are always, always an inverted pyramid with sides aligned with the 110 plane. As you can see here, if you if you look at the evolution, all right, so certain shape are STP, certain shape are UTP as the transition goes on until the very end, you get the final one is this. See? Or, or no, in fact, the final one is, is this lah. So the final one at the end everything is all inverted pyramid ending with a blind cavity and the blind cavity can either be point blind cavity line blind cavity or or a plane blind cavity if you stop it be before it reaches complete slsp okay so if you look at the next slide here that means the fs lc is for any shape is still a rectangle or a square whereby the side is aligned with the one 
0.10 plane so all this will have the FSLC to be a rectangle or a square so again how do we so okay so let, let's let's go back so how do we actually find this one like find the most right most left and, and so on so let's let's do it okay so i'm going to do it this with you let's let's do this with you right so if you can see here clearly let's look at the diamond one first the diamond one first first the the the, the way you do it is find the most right so this is the most right find the most left this is the most left most bottom and then most top what you do then the point that you have identified which is the most left top and bottom you draw a line which is parallel to the one one zero line so this is one zero zero line direction and then the other one is here right so you draw a line on each point which which line is aligned with the one one zero direction so this one also you draw a line which is a line this one also you draw a line draw a line this one also you draw a line that goes through the point and also aligned with the one zero zero and then from all this line you identify the intersection so the interse intersection between this line with the next line to it is here and then here this is one in another intersection this is another intersection and you that's another intersection and then what you do is you connect all the intersection okay connect all the intersection leaving behind your fslc so this is your fslc so at the end of your etching process once you reach your slsp stable self-limited uh stable profile self-limited stable profile slsp your FSLC is a square with with the the most important thing here is to estimate what is the opening size the side so how large is the side you can do that by you you can determine that by doing th trigonometry similarly let's look at this shape here random shape here you can find that the most left is there most right is there most bottom is here most top is maybe here and then draw lines draw lines draw lines draw another line and then identify the intersection okay and then connect all the intersection so this is your fslc so this is when when you get this is how you get this uh, fslc so you the, the the yellow line here is all the identified fslc all right i hope you can understand that one now the next one is that is in terms of etching downwards okay etching downwards uh, forming cavity what about if you want to form a protrusion and that means the flat area and then you protrude something like you want to produce an actual pyramid or a hill okay how do we do it by changing the type of mask so instead of having a mask that looks like this you can invert it so that the solid regions are the shape that we want to achieve and then the other regions are transparent or exposed so we get the transparent window with opaque patch so very simple apply the same rules rules one and two and then determine the concave convex solid window angles and predict the etching profile okay however when we are trying to produce a protrusion okay we have what we call a corner compensation problem this corner uh, this problem is that uh problem with convex corner etching of rectangle patch because convex corner here is here right because this is the, the the solid angle so this is convex so the solid angle here is 90 degrees which is less than 180 therefore it is a convex corner so when when it is a convex corner you know that undercutting will occur so instead of having a protrusion which is a square or a pyramid okay undercutting will occur at the end or at the corner there uh, leaving behind a protrusion which is not exactly a pyramid but rather a hexagonal or something like that okay so therefore we need to have what we call a corner compensation whereby our 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 mask instead of if we want to produce a pyramid structure instead of a square mask solid region we have a square mask with some corner compensation so we compensate the corner here like this or like this 
such that when the undercutting actually occurs, when we stop it, it, it will stop at when it is still a, a pyramid structure that looks like this. Okay, like this. This is what we call a mesa. A mesa is a pyramid structure with a flat top. So we, we, we compensate this corner here, these corners here, so that once we compensate it, the final shape is still a mesa or an actual pyramid or flat topped pyramid. Okay, so these are the other anisotropic etchen that we can use to etch away silicon, TMAH or EDP. You can read through this. And here are all the example uh, structures that you can produce by using bulk micromachining through wet anisotropic etching. So you can read through that. So on the other hand, uh, for dry etching of silicon, you can use either plasma phase or vapor phase. So basically, uh, if it's a vapor phase, it must definitely be a chemical reaction. If it's plasma phase, it can be a physical plus chemical reaction. What do I mean by physical reaction? So physical is when you have uh, an ion. Okay, an ion. So Sorry, so you have an ion and also a neutral molecule or any gas or reactive gas. So the reactive gas can react with the silicon molecule producing a byproduct on the surface and then the ion is there to, to bombard the byproduct and then to peel it off. So it is a physical process. So you physically physically blow away the byproduct so that it keep on digging and digging using an ion. So you're using ion to, to, to uh, similar to sandblasting. So you can imagine physical is similar to sandblasting. If, if you don't know what a sandblasting is, you can search for it. So it's basically using sand uh, at very high speed to, to, to uh, bombard it on the surface and then you chip away a, a part of the part of the surface. And if that happens continuously, you are effectively etching away the surface and going deeper and deeper to, to produce whatever your structure is. So plasma phase etching process can be sputtering. If it's a sputtering, then it's a purely physical process. That means you rely on the bombardment of your of your ion using plasma to, to, to blast away your, your um, exposed region. Or it can be plasma etching where it is purely chemical reaction. So you, if it's purely plasma etching using chemical reaction, then therefore it must be it must be an isotropy etching whereby it can happen in all direction. Physical, if it's a pl plasma, it will be it will be facet faceted. That means it is determined whether it is a one 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 plane. So the one 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 plane will be exposed, similar to wet etching. So it becomes an anisotropy etching. And it can be a reactive ion etching. So a reactive ion etching is the mixture of chemical and physical. So you chemical reaction is occur, and then the ion is there to to blow away the byproduct according to the direction that you want or it can be an inductively coupled rie okay so there are some issues and some example here and then this is another type of a uh, dry etching which is laser driven etching so it is still a chemical reaction but uh, instead of using ion to blast it away after the chemical reaction has occurred you use laser to blast it away so it can be more precise and and you can have a more complex structure by uh, rather than just one direction you can have many direction in one process based on the angle of your of your laser okay so that's all for this lecture so the most important thing just now is with regards to understanding the difference between wet and dry etching anisotropy and isotropy etching and then we look very detailed in wet anisotropy etching of 100 wafer. Okay. Wet 110 wafer and then to determine all this. So we determine all this to control what is the resulting profile of our etching. And then the rules as well and to determine. So these are the important ones. The last part is not so important because you just simply have to read it and know it. It can be asked, but it's basically no analysis involved. It's just basically either you know or you don't know.
the other ones are involving analysis so you need to know how to do the analysis okay and the calculation all right so that's all from me thank you very much um i will end the recording now and hope to see you again in the last uh, in the next class all right bye bye